today we're going to go over the deadlift. The first thing we're going to do is start with a toe touch. This is basically the entryway into the deadlift. Um, and I'll go over what we're going to check and things that you should watch for. So Chris is going to go ahead, feet together, touch his toes, and stand back up. All right. So the first thing we're looking for is a posterior weight shift. So the hips are going back. Uh, when you deadlift, obviously the hips are going back. You're not going to deadlift from here. So if someone goes to touch their toes and doesn't push any weight back, we know they're going to have a little bit of a problem shifting their weight in the deadlift. Okay? So Chris is going to go again and notice how his hips shoot back, just like that. And it's a nice little hip hinge. Stand up. The second thing we're looking for is rounding of the spine. So we don't want someone with a flat back who can touch their toes, okay? That means you have laxity somewhere else. So Chris is gonna go again, he's pretty good. Go and touch your toes. A lot of times what you'll see is he's pretty flat here, now relaxed and round, okay? And he keeps his head up, so his cervical spine, yeah, likes a little bit of extension. But for the most part, he's pretty good. Uh, I've seen a lot worse. So the third thing that he does is bend at the knees, but that's okay for the deadlift, to be honest. Um, he's not going to need that much more range of motion, especially because Chris is a conventional deadlifter. So, when I start teaching the deadlift, it's always with a kettlebell. Um, I think that's the best way to learn the deadlift, and it allows you to kind of sit in between your knees. Uh, it doesn't force you in any weird positions, and you can kind of move your feet where you want to. So Chris is going to go ahead and set up. Now Chris knows how to deadlift, so we're not going to run into any big problems. First thing we're going to do is line up the ankles with the handles. Good. Now, he's going to go down, reach for the handle. Uh -huh. Good. His chest is up. His hips are back. He's not pushing too far forward with his knees. He's not squatting it. Good. Now he's just going to stand up. Now here's the important part. Put the kettlebell back in the same spot. So it was a little, it was a little forward. Put it back right between your ankles. Good. And what that's going to do is force him to shift his hips back and open up a little bit more. Use more of his hips. So if someone's having a lot of problems, and you might see someone who looks like they're peeking into the toilet here, uh, they can't flatten their back. They can't really control the kettlebell from the floor. Uh, you raise it up, put it on some pads or a box or something like that, and just find the range of motion that they can control. Sometimes it's just a little bit, and basically you're just going to walk it down slowly until they can get that range of motion, until they can control the kettlebell off the floor. Now we're going to move into the barbell. So we started with the toe touch. We went into the toe touch. I gave you a few pointers. Then we went to the kettlebell deadlift. I give you a few pointers on that. Now we're past the kettlebell deadlift. We're ready to barbell deadlift. Okay, so Chris is going to start with a conventional deadlift. He's going to walk up, shins close to the bar, but not touching. He's going to go down, grab the bar. Uh -huh. He's going to pull his chest into the bar, raise his hips up a little bit. There you go. Now when he stands up, he's also going to pull back. Up. Good. And back down. That's all right. Good. Good. So Chris is a good conventional deadlifter. Uh, he's got the make for it. He's got pretty short femurs, a long torso. Uh, so when he sets up, his torso is out in front of the bar, but he can actually get upright. Uh, if you have long femur, femur uh, and long torso, something like that, then you're going to be pretty hunched over in the conventional deadlift. On track sumo. Uh, so whichever one allows you to hold your torso a little bit higher is going to be a better stance for you. So Chris is just going to show us what a sumo stance looks like really quick. So sumo is wider and when you drop down to the bar you're going to want to spread your knees out. Good. Grab the bar and stand up. And that's a sumo. So we're going to go back to the conventional deadlift and I'm going to give you a few pointers. So when the weight gets heavier, you're going to see uh, probably most likely the bar is going to drift forward or you're going to get pulled forward. 
Okay? So, how do we combat this? Well, the first thing you want to do when you go down and grab the bar, go down, is actually pull your chest towards the bar uh -huh, and lean back. Okay? So the pull starts by pushing your heels down into the ground. Uh huh. And then you good. So when you're teaching someone an exercise, you want to use pauses, okay? And this is really good for the deadlift because when Chris breaks the bar off the floor, it's going to pull him forward, especially when he pauses, okay? So if you kept going, you could eke it out. Um, it might be a little sloppy, but when you pause, your form has to be on point, okay? If you're on your toes when you pause, the bar is going to pull you all the way forward. So he's going to go down, break the bar off the floor, pause, up. So this is pretty light for him, it's 135. It's hard to see what it would really be like if he, was, if he had a uh, good working weight on there. But basically, he's going to break the bar off the floor, pause, lean back, and pull up. Okay? So the deadlift isn't just straight up, it's up and back. Okay? You always want to be thinking up and back. So that's why sometimes people lift their head up in the deadlift to kind of push themselves back. And the same thing is more or less true with sumo, except for in a sumo deadlift, you're actually going to want to drop more straight down the bar than forward. Okay?